Every July, the racing community in the Northeast convenes at Weed Sports Speedway and the Northeast Dirt Modified Hall of Fame. This year, it's the 32nd annual inductions, and we caught up with some of the drivers and members of the racing community who were inducted in 2024. Uh, it's, it's huge. I mean, to see the people that have received this award before, um, you know, it's, it's quite an honor. And I was fortunate enough to win the, uh, the RP Award, the Promoter of the Year for the country, with and without fans. And this ranks right up there with that. You know, and like I said, we, we really built a great base of people to, 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 uh, to work with on Friday nights. And uh, we're a team. There's nobody, there's no I. It's a team effort. And uh, everybody from, the, you know, my sister in the concessions to the girl who's selling the novelties or whatever, everybody works together, together and everybody wants to see the track be successful. And I think when you get that camaraderie and, um, and the desire to, to make something special, uh, I think it I think it's a testament to everything that, that we've created. And you know, with with our car counts and, and the racing and the atmosphere and the buzz, you know, I'm, I'm proud of everything that we've done, and, and we just want to keep going forward. Oh, it's just great. You know, it's just. I don't want to say it's end, ending of a great career. You know, it's a career to keep on going, but it's just uh, to thank for all the people that appreciated to what you've done for the last 50 years. <laughs> you know, we, I never thought of it that way because I was just always wanting to race. You know, and that's all it was, it was just a race. You know, one check or drop, we're thinking about the next one, you know. And that's what I did, you know, it just, and I was just, I never thought it would ever be this good. Now for you, of course, one of the biggest wins of your career, no question, Super Dirt Week at Syracuse. How much just having that win did that finally mean to you once you got it after those years, after you had that one slipped away with the caliper? Well, it helped a ton. You know, it got a big weight off your shoulder, you know, it's a race that you, you led so many laps before that, and I think just couldn't win it, you know, and it was almost like you know, we won it on a, a race that we shouldn't have. You know, in fact, we've lost many of them that we should have won. You know, so it's 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 great. You know, and then when you know I went back when started running ARCA races, and then I came back and run with the '87 car. Um, actually, left Schrader's shop that year to come back and run the Duchess and we won Syracuse in 94. And it was like, yo, wow, we can do this. We'd go like you know, And that's, that's that's what made it. You know, I was just a racer. You know, I just won the race. I'm a little freaked out about it because it's not something that I had as a goal trying to be a race car driver. Um, you know, I look at these chains and pictures up here, and man, those guys are heroes. And now mine's up on the wall. So it's, uh, it's very humbling. Especially the number of people who came here tonight uh, to support me. You know, people have helped me out over the years. Um, wow. <laughs> now Shane went back to talk. You guys talked about you know your times at Canandaigua throughout the years, yeah. where you were successful against the guys like Bob, yes. Danny, Alan, Steve Payne, and all those guys. What was it just like racing against them night in, night out? It was awesome. It was like a series race every Saturday night, and uh, you knew if you beat them, you beat the best. Because uh, those were the guys who were winning every place else, you know, and, and uh, man, it was it was a rush trying, trying to actually compete with them and then actually beating them. Uh, and I had to learn so much from them guys. But one thing that we all had, and I learned early on, was you, you had to have respect. You didn't have to like a guy, you know, before you had to respect each other. Um, you know, we, we raced hard, but we always respected each other. And, and uh, you know, come out on top once in a while. That was uh, that was pretty good, pretty good times. Well, it means everything because when Glenn Donnelly started Dirt Television, and this week on Dirt, uh, I was a bit of a newbie. You know, I was broadcasting Syracuse University football and basketball games on their statewide radio network, and then I would steal away from there to host a racing show. But Andy Fusco had the passion, he had the knowledge. Um, he, he carried the show, quite frankly. He carried the show until I got my feet wet. 
and then the, the show morphed into you know, the different formats and so on and so forth. But um, at this Hall of Fame ceremonies, all we're hearing is the word passion. And we're hearing it from the drivers, from the mechanics, from the car owners, and now you're going to hear from the broadcaster. And anybody in broadcasting, as you know, Mike, if, if you have a passion and you're surrounded by people with passion for what they're doing, it, it, it's just a perfect scenario. And that's what we had at Dirt Motorsports. Now, for you, for a number of years between this week on Dirt and many of the rush hour, you, you had some iconic moments that you saw throughout your career. A few of them I go back to. One personal for me, Tremont's win in 99 at Syracuse sure. as a Lebanon Valley guy. Vic Coffey's first one, which coincidentally Tremont had the lead with a couple to go. But just looking back, what is it like for you to just say you were able to call all these iconic moments in the Northeast? Very special. And, you know, when Shane Andrews this evening asked how many people have, or maybe it was Glenn Donnelly who asked, how many of you have seen this week on dirt or rush hour on dirt? And every hand went up. Um, again, we were sharing a, a passion, we we're sharing a bond, a, the love of racing. And it was pointed out that I've been to every Indianapolis 500 mile race since 1973. And in my estimation, being a, a native Hoosier, uh, there's nothing like the Indianapolis 500 mile race. But when you're talking about week to week, you know, when you're talking about week to week racing, I don't think there's any finer racing in the world than dirt big block modified racing. And so the Jimmy Hortons and the Gary Tompkins and incidentally the Bob McCready's and so many other names. Uh, we owe a debt of gratitude for them because they put on a product that is uh, unparalleled in my opinion week to week anywhere in the world. Now for us on Dirt Vision we have the opportunity as we were able to digitally take a lot of those rush hour on dirts and this week on dirts from the old days. One of the cool things for a kid like me growing up watching it every week is now your legacy lives on through Dirt Vision and anybody can go in and watch it. Just what's, what's that like for you for all the work that you and you mentioned earlier the team put in yes. for those broadcasts? Yeah, well it means everything and, and now in the recognized in the Hall of Fame is Terry Rumsey and Patrick Donnelly and now Doug Logan. Um, but we represent the dozens of people that work tirelessly to put on a great production, whether it's weekly with uh, this week on dirt or the special occasions or the, the super dirt series races uh, with rush hour on dirt and and so it, it, it means the world you know I for some reason I got mentioned in on Facebook about you can see these vintage races I didn't know I didn't even think about it and here I am last night from the you know from the fast track you know rolling wheels raceway park it's the firecracker 75 and so it just brings back just a rush of, of memories and, and, and fond recollections. Well, that's gonna wrap things up for the Northeastern Modified Hall of Fame induction ceremony and what a great night it was seeing this racing community come together. Congratulations once again to all the award winners and to the class of 2024, Jimmy Horton and Gary Tompkins. That'll wrap things up as we can't wait for the 33rd induction next year.